What is your initial assessment of this coordination, seeming coordination that we're seeing on a number of fronts at the international level to push back on China? Well, uh, China's behavior in the at the start of the Biden administration has a lot of countries worried. And uh, the G7 will be an important uh, meeting for considering what to do about that. From the standpoint of President Biden, he's going to want a show of unity. That will be the most important thing, more important than the specific contents of a statement or uh, decisions on joint action, specific joint action. What he won't want to see is any news stories about divergence in the approach mm -hmm. of the other G7 countries and the United States. Well, that's a crucial point. Ian Bremner from Eurasia Group has stressed that he thinks that the Europeans are far away from aligned with DC on the question of China. Is he right? Are we seeing closer alignment between Brussels, Brussels and Washington? Well, I think um, the US position uh, really depends a lot on what our friends and allies believe. So uh, it's still fairly open-ended. Uh, I think there are many people working in the Biden administration who want to stabilize relations with China. They want to coexist. They don't want to just confront in the way the Trump administration did. So although there's a lot of suspicion of China, including at the public opinion level in the United States and certainly in Congress. Uh, the goal is really to coexist and stabilize relations. Uh, and one way to do that is by having a common front with our friends and allies. But separately, Susan, they will need to deal with China on their own on some other issues, for example. So I guess my question is, yes, you have a united front in the G7 and China on the other side, but then after the summit and everyone goes home, then they have to deal with the blowback. Well, uh, certainly China made quite clear when it sanctioned a bunch of Europeans, including private individuals and research organizations that uh, it intends to retaliate against criticism of Chinese positions. And uh, the COVID origin issue is particularly toxic. So, uh, and of course, today they just passed a law in the National People's Congress that gives them the formal legal authority to retaliate in that way. So, you know, I think there are, but I think the importance of the common front is that uh, it enables countries to act, stand together uh, against that kind of retaliation from China. Understood. And what, what do you think happens? T take us through scenarios on, on, on this likely investigation that might come, of course, on the origins of COVID. So let's say we take that path. What happens a few months down the road? Well, you know, I think calling for an investigation is a very reasonable step to take. The question is if there is some threat uh, uh, toward China, that if they don't do that, X, Y, and Z might happen. Um, and But if the G7 calls for an investigation at the WHO level or calls for uh, some changes in WHO rules for the future that require sharing of information, which I think would be a good thing to do, uh, then it'll be very, very difficult for China to retaliate. On the other hand, I think there are almost no possibilities that they will actually uh, do what the G7 is calling for. Because the issue, the question of the origins of COVID 
have become something like the third rail uh, in yeah. Chinese politics, both domestically and internationally. Right, it's become another red line. And of course, an obvious red line is Taiwan. We know that they're moving ahead, the US and Taipei, with talks around a trade pact. Is mm -hmm. that sensible and smart policy, though, Susan, given the limited economic benefits for both sides, but the potential political fallout? Oh, I think, I think trade agreements with Taiwan are definitely uh, a good thing to do. I mean, there's absolutely no reason that uh, Taiwan as a, as an economy should not have the opportunity to make trade agreements. After all, it is in the World Trade Organization. So there's a precedent for doing this. It's very different, in my view, than a provocative step like inviting Taiwan's president to come give a speech in the United States or other kind of elevation of the treatment of Taiwan or making a hard com security commitment to defend Taiwan. So those actions would be, I think, a lot more provocative than a trade agreement. OK, meanwhile, trade talks are between the U.S. and China are continuing with Gina Raimondo and her Chinese counterpart, Wang Wentao. Do you expect them to be able to keep these trade conversations on a separate track to what's happening on the human rights front and the COVID-19 front? Well, I think that's the intention of both countries. So I, I believe they'll be able to do that. Um, and I think it will be desirable to show some progress on some of the structural issues in the Chinese uh, more state-dominated economy now. And that might help build some positive momentum in the overall relationship. So, you know, if... Xi Jinping and the Chinese leadership uh, have a pragmatic appreciation of China's national interests. I think they would want to do that.